Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. This footage was recorded during the streamer event for Wilds of Eldraine, where I got to showcase the new expansion a few days ahead of release. And today we're looking at a Sultai self-mill deck, which is trying to put as many creature cards in its own graveyard as possible to power up its various threats. And those include the new Cruel Somnophage, a two-mana creature with power and toughness each equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. So that also includes the opponents. Don't want to play this with empty graveyards, but we can use the adventure to mill ourselves for four first, and then cast a Somnophage out of the adventure zone. And our deck features 30 creatures total, so that's half of our deck, so we're pretty likely to mill a few with the Somnophage's adventure. And then we also have the full set of Urborg Lurgoif, can be kicked for blue and or black mana, so we can potentially cast it for four mana total, in which case we can mill ourselves for six, three for each time it was kicked. So another way to put additional creature cards in our graveyard to increase its power and toughness, because the Lurgoif also scales with a number of creatures in our graveyard, does not track the opponents. And then we also have two copies of Old Stick Fingers, which can be cast for X equals zero, and then its power and toughness are also equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard. But for every extra mana we sink into casting Old Stick Fingers, we can put an additional creature card in our graveyard when we cast it. So we've got 10 of these win conditions for potentially just two mana that can become incredibly large, easily getting above 10 power and toughness. So that's our game plan. We also have four copies of Tyvar to potentially get them back from the graveyard, in addition to milling three cards with a minus two ability, and then a plus one can give them pseudo vigilance. And then another new addition from Wilds of Eldraine is the Blossoming Tortoise, a 3-3. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, we mill three cards and then return a land card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this helps us ramp. Also says activated abilities of lands we control cost one less to activate. And land creatures we control get plus one plus one. And we've got some very nice utility lands in our mana base, including the new creature lands from Wilds of Eldraine. Two copies of a Restless Cottage can turn into a 4-4 creature, and then when it attacks we can exile a card from a graveyard and create a food token, which can gain us some life back. And then one Restless Vine Stalk can turn into a 5-5 creature, and when it attacks can turn another creature into a base power and toughness 3-3 until end of turn, so both our creatures or the opponent's creatures. And then we also have two copies of Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, which can also get a 1-mana discount from the Tortoise, and then we can mill a few cards into our graveyard, in addition to making a 2-2 bear token. But Argoth can also meld alongside Titania, and we're playing two copies of Titania Voice of Gaia, which has natural synergy in this deck, as we'll end up milling quite a few lands into our graveyard, which can gain life with Titania. And if we have four or more lands in our graveyard in our upkeep, and have Titania and Argoth in play, we can meld both into Titania Gaia Incarnate, which will return all those lands from our graveyard into play, power toughness equal to the number of lands we control, which can also get out of hand, and then provides us with a huge trampling vigilant reach haste creature. And and then we can also pay four mana to power up some of our lands by putting four plus one plus one counters on them. Can also synergize with our creature lands. And then we've got four copies of a Writhing and Necromace, which gets a one mana discount for each creature card in our graveyard. So while we can't get it back with Tyvar, we can routinely cast this for one or two mana as a 5 5 with Death Touch. And then we've got a few more legendaries to synergize with Argoth, so it enters the battlefield untapped. Two copies of the Jukai Visionary alongside Old Stick Fingers at two mana potentially. Visionary can activate to mill four cards into our graveyard while potentially ramping as well. And the channel ability is a way of getting back Somnophage and Lurgoif in the late game, since these aren't legendary. And then we also have two copies of Old Rutstein, a 1-4. When it enters the battlefield and at the beginning of our upkeep, we mill one card. If we milled a land, we get to make a treasure token. If we milled a creature, we get to make a 1-1 one -one insect. And if we milled a non-creature non-land card, we get to make a blood token instead. But definitely more likely to make treasures or insect tokens. And then we have our four copies of Skyfisher Spider, which is the main removal in our deck, since we're not going to make room for a lot of non-creature spells, since we want to keep the creature count as high as possible, it means that playing a creature that can double up as removal can be very useful. When it enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice another creature, 
if we do destroy target a non-land permanent and when the skyfisher spider dies we can also gain one life for each creature card in our graveyard and if we do exile a skyfisher spider so that can also easily gain us 10 life which can be very useful against the aggressive red decks in the format and Skyfisher Spider often wants to be paired with our Prowler, a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, mill 3 cards, and then we may put a land card from among those into our hand. And if we don't, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Prowler instead. So usually want to use this to hit our land drops early on, while also putting additional cards into our graveyard. And then uh, rounding out our deck, we also have two copies of Invasion of Amoncat, which will mill each player for 3. So perfect for powering up our Somnophage especially. And then it has four defense counters. If we manage to defeat it, we get a lasso tap convert, a 4-4 that can enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature card in a graveyard. So we can potentially copy an opposing shield root if we happen to destroy one earlier with spider, or if we happen to mill one when it entered the battlefield. And then when invasion enters, of course, we also get to draw a card while the opponent has to discard a card. So just a nice two for one that can turn into a very powerful creature if the graveyards are set up right for it. Now, now do keep in mind if Convert tries to copy Somnophage or Lurgoif, it's still going to be a 4-4 four, four, so it doesn't scale with the number of creature cards in our graveyard, that 4-4 four, four will kind of override it. So that's important to keep in mind, but there's usually no lack of juicy targets to copy. And uh, yeah, I think that rounds out our entire deck, mostly just trying to play some huge Lurgoifs and Somnophages, eventually outgrind the opponent, if not with our creatures, then maybe with our creature lands instead. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is lacking a land or two, but uh, it seems fine enough. I guess our lands also come into play tapped on turn two. So don't get to curve out perfectly against the red aggro. We definitely don't want to fall behind. So, Coast was a good pickup. I'll just mill myself for four. And then next turn we could play Goif with Kicker, or just play a Somnophage as a 2 2. Invasion deals two damage. And Feldon's going for the invasion, so they might have a Lightning Strike to transform it. So Lurgoif with Kicker, I think, is the move now. Four five, not bad. And then Skyfisher can be an answer to a dragon, which your opponent might be transforming end of turn here. So what's the plan? I want something to sacrifice to the spider that I don't mind losing. So maybe a tortoise. Can get back a cottage as well. And that seems good. And then Lurgoif attacks. Pretty fast clock. Opponent transforms a dragon. But next turn we can try and take it out with a spider, which also can gain a lot of life against the red aggro. One mana necromance coming up. Eh, opponent can take out tortoise with two damage from Thunder Maw. It only grows the Lurgoif. And a Scalding Viper. Can also punish us for casting cheap spells. Although the uh, Necromass has more than one mana in terms of mana value. So, what are we working towards? Can go Somnophage plus Spider. Although, do we really want to sacrifice anything here? So, maybe it's a Necromass plus Spider, sack the Necromass. Take out Thundermaw. And then if Spider dies, we gain 9 life here. So 
So it's going to be difficult for them to burn us out, but I guess not impossible. Also have the cottage to attack, make a food token, which can gain us more life back. I'll block the Viper. Now I'll block Felden. I'm happy if they finish off the spider. But now with a cottage attack, we're threatening lethal, forcing essentially chump with Mishra's Foundry, chump with Viper, go to one, and then we'll still be able to gain three of the food token. Play with fire kills spider. Yeah, that's probably not what they wanted to do. Back up to 20. And then now... Could still activate Cottage, force him to double chump, and then I can still play a Somnophage. Alright, feels good. Beating up on the red deck, still at 20 life. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to Prowler, try and hit our land drops. Fill the graveyard for Goif and Necromace. Get to start with a creature land as well, always feels nice. Up against blue-green. Found a land, so I'll take the untapped one. And kick Lurgo if it is. Just a 1 2, so still pretty small. Build a lot of lanes. And there's Calyx, so opponent's playing some enchantments. Alright, for now, play another Prowler, I believe. And then Spider can maybe take out Calyx next turn. Could also leave Green Mana untapped, so we're more likely to play another Goif, although I might want to save it to just play with Kicker. There's also the chance that we can play cheap Necromance, but probably not cheap enough. Okay. So we've got a 3-4 Goif. And a cursed courtier here gets a plus one counter. Opponent passes. Okay, so Skyfisher take out Calyx is maybe the safest way forward. Next turn we can keep adding to the board. Could also just go Lurgoif, play a two mana Somnophage, but then we're not milling ourselves as much. Or mill for four, hope to play two mana Necromace, could also be reasonable. And wait on the Skyfisher Spider for another turn. Eh, it's still making me nervous to keep Calyx on the board, so let's just take it out now. And attack. If we ever find the land to go with Titania, we can melt pretty quickly. Opponent had a backup Calyx, unfortunately. And yeah, there it is, Argoth, Speak of the Devil. So we can play Titania into Argoth, which will be untapped. And then still maybe just play Lurgoif. Or I can mill myself for four, which is also reasonable. And then next turn play a couple more creatures out. This can also put more lands in Graveyard. Triggering Titania. I'll keep Spider back. Opponents at 6. Removal could be bad, especially if they can copy it with Calyx. I would love to melt Titania. But we've got some more heavy hitters coming up. Three blind mice, I don't mind. 
So no removal for Titania yet. And we get to meld. That's awesome. 11-11, trample, haste. And uh, sure, we can do some more fun stuff. Or we can just attack for the win. Maybe just uh, go for Lurgoif kicked. Enabling a one mana Necromace. Okay. And smash. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little sketchy. Lots of expensive cards that I wouldn't be able to enable unless we mill a few creatures with Lurgoif, but it also requires more mana. So I'll take a mulligan. This is a bit more reasonable. Can play Shigeki turn 2 and hopefully activate turn 3. And Argoth might enter untapped, but I guess it doesn't really change my sequencing. I can just play Coast on 2, Glade on 3. Opponent on an Esper deck. If they destroy it without exiling, Tyvar minus 2 looks good. Better chill just to lock it down, I guess that also works. Okay, so in that case, you could play Stick Fingers X equals 1 just to get it in play. Or I could mill myself with a Somnophage. Although, I would probably want to play Turtle next turn. Tyvar Plus is also an option to just untap Shigeki. And then we can still eventually activate it. It's not a bad play. Although I would probably go for Tortoise next turn. So I'm kind of lacking Stick Fingers for one. That way if I play Tortoise next turn milling more creatures, it also grows Stick Fingers. Alright, let's just main phase Tortoise, see if it resolves. It does. Meld two lanes and a planeswalker. So hit for one. Might have to worry about Wandering Emperor, which could just make a knight to ambush Stick Fingers, so maybe I'll wait. No Emperor. Cooped up our Tortoise. So lots of enchantment removal. Okay, now we've got a bit more mana to work with at least. Could go for an invasion of Amon Cats and then still mill with a Somnophage, potentially growing stick fingers enough to transform it right away. Seems like a good starting point. Okay, we milled a Catilda for the opponent, that's potentially a problem. And our opponent discarded S9 Antics, good to know about. Okay, so Stick Fingers only a 3-3, three, three, so let's hope to mill another creature here. We did. So Stick Fingers can attack. And what does our Convert copy? Do have a Titania, although... I don't think it can actually meld since it doesn't have the backside of Titania. Maybe I'm still better off just copying the Somnophage. But yeah, it still doesn't override the power and toughness. Is melding optional? I guess we would have to look at Titania. I don't think it's optional. So, yeah, it would have been an interesting interaction. Picked up a Skyfisher, which we can put to use. Now our opponent does have three mana to exile the enchanted creature. So, the business person is probably the best one to free. Or visionary, although I can always untap it with Tyvar. So 
So sacrifice stick fingers in case we find another one. Destroy witness protection. And attack for four. And play a 7-7 seven, seven Somnophage. And then next turn Tyvar, untap Shigeki, activate it. Could be one line. Ossification deals with Somnophage. So nothing for the opponent to enchant with Katilda. And a bank of Tyvar. Can also start activating Argoth to make more tokens. And then I could activate Shigeki now, although I'm not going to grow the Somnophage because it's still a 4-4 four, four here. Wouldn't can draw with a Bitter Chill. I found a Cottage, not bad. Creature lands pretty good against all these enchantments that they can only play at sorcery speed. Replay Visionary, could have also held it for channel. Opponent runs out to Fairy. If they can keep the token in play, they could enchant it with Katilda, and that could hurt. Candle Tramp or Somnophage. So let's see here. Activate Shigeki. And then I can still activate Cottage. Did not hit a land. But now we can minus two on Tyvar. Getting back Somnophage. 14-14, now 13-13. Animate Cottage. And we'll just finish off the ferry. Pumped by the tortoise still. So Spider can go face. And exile Katilda. So we don't have to worry about it. Even though it does shrink down Somnophage by one. Not bad. And then I might hang on to Visionary to channel on the off chance that our opponents could a sweeper. Can sank the food token. Back up to Fairy. It's gonna have to chump the Somnophage here. So our opponent's digging for removal. Ossification, alright. Exile Somnophage. But they should still be dead on board to the 5 5 Cottage. Alright, so pretty unique game here against all these enchantments. But seeing the value of creature lands for sure. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is good. Could use an untapped land to play on turn two for Prowler. But I'll give it a shot. Put on black green. And just want to get a green a land and play. We'll make it blue green. And a Dread Knight on two. Okay, so don't quite get to curve out perfectly, but that's fine. Next turn. Got three mana. Although I don't really want to play Tyvar without having a two drop to return. Might just uh, play Prowler to set up my next land drop. Opponent with a Hex Mage and Brave the Wilds, sacking the uh, Curse to roll to make a 3 3. So that's gonna hurt. Can sacrifice Prowler to the uh, Spider potentially and take something out. Uh, 
And Jewel Thief is next. And Hopeless Nightmare. Got plenty of cards to discard. Including Somnophage, which I can return with Tyvar. Take six. Alright, play Spider. Sacking Prowler. Taking out one of the opponent's creatures. Can't take out their land. So Jewel Thief might be the next best one. And if this dies, I can gain three. Okay, so next up, Tyvar, get back Somnophage. Play Somnophage is an option. Could also save it to potentially mill myself, but we've got uh, Invasion and Prowler to do that. So I'm not hating on uh, Tyvar minus, just play Somnophage. We and we found two more creatures. Okay, this is where we try to turn the corner. Tyvar can give our creatures vigilance of sorts. And uh, Tortoise was great too. So start with Prowler. And then Tortoise. Could also Invasion of Amonkhets. That way... I maybe force the opponent to Chum Block. But Tortoise develops my mana even more. And they're probably happy to jump with one Dread Knight when they can use the adventure. Alright, this is lethal, so our opponent already has to jump one of them. And then we'll untap the other with Tyvar. Yeah, the Somnophage does not mess around. We've got Argoth as a backup plan, not that our opponent's casting a sweeper here. And the our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, fine hand. Turn two Prowler, turn three Invasion. Take it from there. Do still need a second green source for Tortoise. And there it is. Although we may not be able to curve out perfectly. Do have one creature in Graveyard, so I have the option of playing Stick Fingers for zero, play Cottage, and then next turn be guaranteed to play Tortoise. Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent on a blue-green deck. So, hope that uh, Tortoise resolves. And get back another creature land. I guess we'll diversify here. Attack for four. And then next turn I could double Invasion of Amon Cats. Journey can bounce Tortoise. And we'll draw them a card if I replay it here. That's okay. Um, start with Invasion of Amon Cats. Argoth also enters untapped thanks to Stick Fingers. And Stick Fingers will transform the invasion here if I want to. And Invasion again. Their opponents playing a couple planeswalkers as well, their own tortoise. And that's enough for a concession. 
Yeah, could uh, attack, transform invasion, maybe get a tortoise out of the graveyard. Certainly had a few options. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems decent. Turn to Prowler, get our mana going. And it's going to be a red aggro with turn one play with fire. Hoping to find a spider at some point to gain that life back. For now, Prowler. And a questing druid's going to exile the top two cards, finding play with fire, monstrous rage. And I'll grab. Probably want an untapped land over Cottage, although the life gain could be nice. But I would rather go. Lurgoif with Kicker and then Mill with Somnophage play it. So let's just grab a Cascade here. No green mana for Questing Druid yet. Play with Fire goes upstairs. Could also play Old Rudstein. And then wait on a fully kicked Lurgoif. Invasion kills Prowler. Nope, goes upstairs. Okay. So, yeah, maybe just Lurgoif kicked once is good enough. Rudstein making treasure would also be helpful in helping me double spell. But getting a Lurgoif in play means that next turn I can potentially grow it significantly with Somnophage. Already at 2 3. Invasion of Ragatha kills Prowler. Goes face, we're at 10. So, step one. Probably just mill with Somnophage. Could also minus two Tyvar, get back Prowler. And then hope to still play a cheap Necromace. Let's start here. Best case scenario, mill three creatures. Almost, so we could have played double Necromace. Now, probably just play Somnophage, attack for five. And then next turn we can mill once again and likely play double Necromace for just two mana. Well then I will block. They get to dig five cards deep, but that's okay. Unlike Lurgoy, Summon of Age also grows with opposing creatures going to the graveyard. All right, let's set this up. We milled at least one creature, which is what we needed. And uh, that's an attack for 13, which is almost lethal by itself, but would be able to add double Necromance to the board as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand does need to find a third land, ideally a green source for Titania. But uh, yeah, it's good enough for now. Can mill myself with Somnophage. Always love drawing Prowler. Up against the red-white. Food fight, okay. Opponent's a food fight deck. And uh, can maybe hang on to Soaring City to bounce an artifact or enchantment at some point. Hit a land, luckily. And next turn could go for Old Rudstein or Titania. Thrain Spider. Gives us a power stone. Don't know if we really have a use for it. I guess it helps activate our creature lands if we get to that point. For now, play Titania. And pass. And then we'll be able to gain some life when playing Lurgoif next turn. The Iron Crag also makes sense. And a second food fight, so they can now deal 3 damage when sacking an artifact. 
could still hang on to Soaring City, but probably want to blue mana for Kicked Lurgoyf. Milled one land at least. Good enough for Titania. And no attacks. Alright, we've got a 5-6 Goyf in play. And we can uh, grow the team some more next turn. No Argoth in sight yet. Ooh, the refinery saying whenever refinery or another non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a tapped power stone token. Okay, can see the synergy with food fight there. I probably want to mill myself with Somnophage, which will gain life with Titania, most likely. And then I can play a Tyvar and minus it to get back a Somnophage. I'll likely mill another creature or two. So it's maybe still better to play that before attacking. Alright, did not mill an extra creature, so end up shrinking the Goyf here. But uh, gaining a life with Titania, which could be relevant in a food fight. And uh, I probably don't want to send Titania when they can finish it off with a food fight activation. Opponent Shams Lurgoyf. Possibly setting up a sweeper here. Although we can get back on the board. Just sacking the spider itself. Gardens can copy the refinery as well. So there's something going on here. Mondrank to double the refinery tokens and the various power stones. Keeps Iron Crag as a ramp artifact. But uh, we're gonna deal some damage. Pun can make Mondrank indestructible to soak up a bit of damage. But we'll keep milling. Attack. I'm wondering if I want to commit double Somnophage here. Opponent falls all the way to three. So it doesn't feel like it should add too much more to the board. Maybe just go for Stick Fingers for two or play an old Rutstein. And then can plus to untap. Right, let's see if they've got a board wipe. So your opponent gets two replacement power stones, although they are tapped. So it's not like they can go infinite here. But they can deal a lot of damage. Goes upstairs, down to 15. Twelve. We're at nine. Three mana left. We're at six, and this should be game. So yeah, the life game from Titania potentially kept us alive this game. But uh, good to see a very interesting deck from our opponent. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We are missing some of our larger creatures, but double Prowler is still a good start. Opponent also black, green, and Cottage can be effective against us, exiling our creatures. Could also use Boseju to blow up their non-basic land. Opponent's playing the same color pair so far. Found an Argoth. 
Can play that alongside another Prowler next turn. And Dread Knight for the opponent. Not in a hurry to destroy that. So could also go for an invasion now. Play Dark Slick Shores while it's untapped. And uh, see some of the opponent's cards. So not the most exciting hands. Couple too many lands for my taste. Shieldred, that's definitely worth taking out. Alright, we found a Somnophage, that's good. So play Spider. And avoid taking too much damage, basically. Shieldred down. And then next turn I can mill myself and play a large Somnophage. Do I trade? Gain four. Can probably gain more life later. Another Dread Knight. And another Spider. Can combine that with Prowler. And can play a tapped Argoth. Or Dark Slick Shores in case we find a Legendary. But I'll just play tapped Argoth. Pretty large, but could just die to spot removal. Keep Spider back. And they do indeed have a go for the throat. So now might be an okay time to trade Spider for Dread Knight, gain 8. Yeah, I'll just take it for now. Can always sack Spider to the other one to gain life. Gix's command, returning Shieldred's Greta, making me sack Spider. Okay. So we'll keep Spider for Shieldred, which means I don't have a whole lot of excitement going on right now. Can activate Argoth, could channel Abandoned Mire, and then I guess play Somnophage, that's not bad. Sure. The tortoise would also be nice if we could cast it right now. Could always play Prowler, grab tortoise, but Somnophage seems like the pick. Can play it right now. And threaten to transform invasion. Can block the Dread Knights. Opponent still attacking. So if they're just gonna play shield road, use the adventure, then we can transform the invasion. Nope, they're gonna go for Greta. Can force them to jump at least. So Prowler plus Spider. Could also try a Rudstein, hope to mill a creature, but that seems a little sketchy. Grab a Cottage. Shield her down once again. And then it's interesting whether I go face or transform invasion. Probably still better to flip the invasion. I was gonna jump. Okay, so we're starting to get ahead. Still have to watch out for the opponent's creature lanes. But we have a Boseju, oof, another shielded. Third time's a charm, I guess. So if Somnophage attacks, they'll just jump with a Dread Knight. So what's the alternative? 
can attack with Cottage, Spider, Somnophage, Chump, Eat Cottage, still only take three. So that's not it. I guess it's a uh, Rutstein. And then possibly still activate Argoth. Make a token. Yeah, I guess we'll trade Somnophage for Shieldred if they offer, but they're likely chumping with Dread Knights. So they can draw a bunch and gain life with Shieldred. And I guess we'll make a 2-2. Plays Dread Knight. Yeah, Dread Knight lines up well against our large creatures. Since they can keep coming back. We just need to go wide enough. So now do we have enough to transform Invasion of Amoncat? Pono's got three blockers. So still only if we animate Cottage. Which may be worth it. So I'll have to send everyone to make sure it transforms. And then what do we exile? I want to keep Shieldred in there in case I can copy it with a transformed invasion. This implies a backup Shieldred. Channel Abandoned Mire get back their own shieldreds, but then this one will be in the graveyard for me to copy. We'll gain a bunch of life. And then the opponent's shieldred is probably the pick. Blossoming Tortoise also has its uh, moments here. So those can balance each other out. And then we'll still have Boseju at the ready for an opposing creature land. 22 cards remaining. Yeah, this is not going to be easy to uh, close out. Do we have any Titanias left? I guess there is one we could draw. Another Greta. Activating Argoth risks milling Titania. Take our draw step. 20 cards left. Yeah, making a 2-2 doesn't really make a huge difference here, does it? So, just gonna pass a turn. Cut down Rutstein, that happens. And there's Titania. Alright, so got a shot here. 
Now I don't mind activating Argoth. Play Titania first. Try and put more lands in the graveyard. And then it's mainly the activated ability to turn lands into creatures that's going to help. Can channel Boseju just to put it in the graveyard, basically. And Red Knight's attacking. And could just take six so they don't get to draw, since they're maybe digging for answers. Another Greta, just to get a food. And I'll finish off the vine stock. Titania transforms. Get all those lands back. And now we can activate Titania a bunch, but uh, yeah, this could be game over. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a grindy game. Needed Titania to trample over those annoying Dread Knights. Alright, so we get to see our Sultai self mill in action, and I'm very impressed by the deck's performance. Seems like it can attack from a lot of different angles, but routinely making giant creatures for just two mana feels very powerful. Just gotta dodge those farewells exiling your graveyard, which is pretty difficult to recover from. So cards like Farewell and Other Graveyard Hate might keep it in check. We also saw the Dread Knight sometimes being annoying for our large creatures that don't have Trample. So there are definitely ways to attack this graveyard strategy. But overall, definitely impressed and I would recommend it going forward. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.